Magnus Carlsen absolutely crushed Anish Giri yesterday in round four of Norway chess. So this was over in just 34 moves and it feels like a foregone conclusion when these guys play recently, either a draw or a win to Magnus. So let's see what happened here. Magnus had white, he kicked off with pawn d4, Anish went knight f6, we had pawn c4, e6, knight f3 from Magnus, pawn d5 now takes it back to the standard queen's gambit declined, and now Magnus goes knight c3 today, he doesn't go g3, playing the Catalan which we saw the other day, here knight c3, and now c5 from Giri, this is the so-called semi-tarash, a pure tarash defence is without the knight on f6, just the pawns developed. So now we had captures on d5, one of the main ways to play. And now different options for black. This is one of the most common. Then white goes e4 very often. You get this sort of stuff, very mainline theory. But instead of capturing with the knight, we didn't have pawn takes either. We had takes on d4. And this is a trendy way to play at the moment. We've seen a lot of games in this line. So the queen now recaptures. Now this pawn took on d5. And so black's got the worst pawn structure here, but in compensation, they get free and easy development. If you look at the two bishops, for example, they've already had their eyes opened, whereas the white bishop stuck back on f1 still. And now e4 is a main move here, that's what you can play, but Magnus went bishop to g5, also a well-known move. We had bishop to e7, pawn e3, Giri castled the king. Now this bishop came to e2, Knight c6 hit the queen, and it just dropped back to d3 here. Now we can see why the bishop didn't go on d3, and it looks down this way towards the king. So pawn h6 from Giri hit the bishop. It dropped back into h4 here. Bishop e6 now developed, overprotected the pawn. Castles from Magnus, and now queen to b6 was played. Hits this pawn here. And we're actually following the game of Prague versus Magnus Carlsen in the Oslo Esports Cup. So in this position, Magnus was playing black. And here Prague went pawn to a3. Black can't actually take here. Or the rook comes across. You trap the black queen there. So instead, Magnus just developed a rook to the centre here with rook f to d8. Game went on. Magnus actually went on to win that one. But it is a position known to both players here. But instead of going pawn a3, in this game, Magnus actually took on f6 now. And after the bishop recaptured, yes, he's given up the bishop pair, but now he takes on d5. He wins a pawn, but after takes here, and that's kind of forced, by the way, you're hitting here, also hitting here with check. Then the queen recaptured, and now Giri picks up on b2, restores the material, and Magnus goes bishop to c4, saving that bishop which was attacked, and also pressuring down here on this f7 pawn. And here Giri just makes a terrible blunder. He takes this rook on a1. Now the best move here is to actually just go queen a3, then prepare to bring a rook to the d-file. Okay, game goes on. White could argue that they're a bit better because of the pressure here on the light squares, but black's got the two on one in the end game, so it's balanced. But instead of going queen to a3, Giri took on a1, the rook recaptured, and he took back with the bishop. Now, sometimes giving a queen for two rooks is a very good trade-off. The two rooks will be better. But in this position, it's just not very good because Magnus now goes g4, and he has a very simple attacking plan. Run the pawn down, come to g6, pressure f7, which is pinned, and this knight could be hopping in at some point, also pressuring f7, h7. So it's just a massive attack now for white before black can actually get coordinated. So here Giri actually brought a rook to the e-file. If you come to d8, by the way, which looks very natural, well then the queen can come to f5, still menaces around the king. And one of the big challenges here for black is that you can't get knight a5 in to attack this bishop kick it off the diagonal, the queen covers the square, you can't go g6 because that one's pinned, this pawn is pinned to the king by the bishop, so it's all a bit uncomfortable. Magnus would have kept pressure even after rook to d8, he'd have gone queen f5. So instead Giri went for this defensive setup, brings that rook to the e-file, and now you could go g5 as white. 
Instead, Magnus prepares it with pawn h4, then after g5, knight takes, his knight will be protected. So rook to e7 from Giri, trying to overprotect that f7 pawn, and now pawn g5, really simple stuff. Coming to g6 potentially, so Giri captures that one, the knight now took back, and again there's a lot of pressure here, the queen's coming to f5, and that's why bishop f6 was played, so that after queen f5, now that knight can be eliminated, and Magnus took back with the pawn. But once again, black still can't untangle, the knight's pretty tied down, you can't go g6, so rook e5 was played, hits the queen, it dropped back into f4 here, and it's still so tough to find good moves for Anish here. He goes rook c5, pressuring the bishop, but it's all pretty hopeless right now, because pawn g6 from Magnus, the knight came to e5, the rooks just cleared that square, but now Magnus simply takes on f7, the knight recaptures, and this is basically an eternal pin. That king's in all sorts of trouble, the pieces are tangled up, and the bishop here now can just simply move to a different square. You could come back to b3, Magnus comes to e6 instead, and now Giri's next move looks slightly strange, putting the rook on say c6, and just preparing to swing across here or here looks a bit more natural to me, but he goes rook to h5, then this queen came to c7, and we can see the big problem here, black's completely tied up, can't make actual use of this rook, and Magnus is just going to eat these pawns on the queen side. Now Giri just abandons these pawns. If he comes over with a rook b5 to try and protect them, well white can just play very slowly here. You could start with e4 for example, f4 coming soon. You start creating new weaknesses against the king. The bishop could come back and sit on d5 soon. And eventually white should start breaking down the black position, winning those queenside pawns as well. So instead of actually trying to protect them, after queen c7, Giri went pawn g5, wants to give his king some room, Magnus took here, now the rook came to h6, pressures the bishop, it dropped back to b3 here, pawn g4 from Giri, he's really at a loss for good moves here, now we had captures on a7, the king came out of the pin here, and now pawn e4 from Magnus, preparing to cement that bishop in the centre of the board, Rook h5 was played, and now queen c7 clears the way for the a-pawn to start running down, also looks at this e5 square, and after king f6, pawn a4, here Giri actually just resigned, he was that fed up with the position, he didn't want to watch Magnus just grind it out to the win. Why did he resign? Well again, it's kind of hard to find good moves. I mean, say you go knight e5 for example, trying to then free up the rook to move somewhere, well then white can go queen to d6 check. If the king goes away to hold this rook, which is also attacked, then you can check from here. You have to now come back with the knight or else lose your rook, so you haven't actually then made progress, and bishop d5 can come, cuts the rook, now the pawn is running. So it's really just all over for black, it's just a matter of time and technique, and we know Magnus has that in abundance. So he smashes up Anish Giri, goes top of the tournament, really hot stuff right now from Magnus Carlsen. If you enjoyed this video then do consider subscribing to the channel, and to see another epic chess game, click here. Thanks for watching, see you soon.